What is up guys? Bob Guy here. We're playing some core equipment combo in modern. So this deck is a little spicy, a little on the spicy side. We'll see how it goes. Hello. Good luck. Um, not an ideal hand, but I think it is a fine hand. So I think I will keep. We'll see what we're up against. A little heavy on the mana, honestly. And I would rather have a zero drop equipment than two two drops. Although, I mean, it could end up being good depending on what our opponent is. He's leading off uh, with a serum vision on the stack. Bring this down slightly and sell them the same size. Yeah, I think that's probably better. Lotus Bloom, uh oh. He's a comboer. Uh, maybe it's um, Ad Nauseum. Ad Nauseum would run Lotus Bloom. Okay, well that's ticking down. We don't have a good way to interact with it. And he is gonna, he's on the play and started with a Lotus Bloom, so could it be bad? Maybe it's not Ad Nauseum. It's definitely some kind of combo deck. I don't think you'd run a uh, Lotus Bloom if you want a combo deck. I can hope it's Dragon Storm, but it's probably not. Yeah, it's definitely not Ad Nauseum either. Explore. Maybe it's just some kind of vamp deck, I guess. It's running Fetid Pools. Weird. Seems like a little bit of a strange ramp deck. He hasn't shown me any removal yet. Alright. I, mean, I think I'm gonna... There's some question about whether this is the right thing to do, but he could threaten to kill something next turn. I can get off at least two free draws here. Um, well, now I might stop. There's no real reason to play out the Spider Silk net yet. I will want to play it out next turn for sure, but if he kills this guy, I'm almost definitely playing the second copy of SRAM. Lotus Bloom is still ticking down. Yeah, we've got it's a little bit of a slow draw, and unfortunately, we don't have a pure steel. This Saram was a pure steel would be in great shape. He plays as foretold. Oh, it's an as foretold deck. Super interesting. Oh, I see. That's probably why he's running the Lotus Bloom. That's just free mana if he if he uses it then. Okay, he just plays down the Lotus Bloom to keep going. Black Fatal Push. Yep, that's fine. Well, that could be good. He only has one card left in hand and doesn't have any obvious way to draw a card. And being an As Foretold deck is strong, but he doesn't he's not showing me anything scary yet. Another land is not what we wanted. Play down a SRAMS. Let's cast the Spider Silk Net. Alright, well, that is a guy that I like to see. It's a little hard. I kinda wanna equip the Paradise Mantle to SRAM, but if I equip it here I do more damage this turn. Definitely don't want to not spend the mana. I think I'm going to equip it to SRAM just because I might have to play down pure steel to get the free equips next turn. That'll give, this will give me, no, actually I, I didn't need to do that. I probably could have equipped it to core just to get an extra damage in. Well, he's going to have a million mana, but he only has, I guess he's going to have two cards in hand. If those two cards are good, uh, one's the Scryland. That could help him a lot. Usually we win on turn four, but I'm not sure it's going to happen this time. We just This was a little bit of an awkward draw. Zero drop equipment is probably our best top deck. What does this do? A doubling season. All right. That's good, but it doesn't do anything to us now. So now he's in top deck mode and doesn't have a whole lot on the battlefield. Another land is not what we wanted. Well, I'm going to lead on Pure Steel Paladin, followed up by Cranial Plating. Hopefully we can combo off with this. Okay. Really need some of those. Always yes, always yield. Some of those zero drop enchantments. Nope. Uh, that's pretty bad. I'll put down a second Duelist. Equip here. I mean, I'm doing a lot of damage here, but I don't kill him, so he still has a pretty good chance. And if he gets a sweeper or something, I just lose probably. All right, he goes to nine. I mean, he's Dobbs, but obviously, it all depends on what he draws here. 
But yeah, this was a really... I got way too much land. I got super flooded. Two mana. One mana. Zero mana. Okay, he gives up. Seems good. Alright, against them. As foretold... I could use Fragmentize to get rid of it. That might be worth it. He had some removal, but not a lot. I don't think I care about going up the removal heavy stuff. I mean, I still managed to combo off pretty well in terms of getting my combo pieces out. I just drew almost none of my zero cost enchantments, which was a little disappointing. What do I, if I bring in the Fragmentize, what do I go down? Let's go down one Srams. I don't think the Captain's Clause is worth it. Maybe a, a Spider Silk Net or an Accord Shield. He could go up removal too, which would make me feel bad about going down the Cerams. I'm going to go down one Kite Sail Apprentice for a Spectral Possession. But I have to I have to guess his um, strategy is all about the as foretold. We are on the draw this time. Hopefully our draw is a little better. This is not keepable. You do, I mean, it's not super common, but you do get hands like this sometimes. The deck doesn't need more than one creature, but it does need one creature. It's like... If I knew the next thing I was drawing was a pure steel paladin, I would obviously keep it, but you can't know that. Um, this is a rough one, too. Let's keep in Scrywell. Actually, I think I want that on the bottom. Well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how well Spectral Possession lines up against him. He started with a turn one Lotus Bloom again. Hopefully, we either get a one drop or a land. Nope, cranial plating. Well, cranial plating does get big pretty quick at least. But the problem is we kept our most expensive threat. Which was a lot better than our first hand, which was just all equipment. I probably should have gone to five. This deck does not mulligan super well, and it's it's one that has to mulligan a lot. Plays down. Oh, he plays an explorer, draws a card, but doesn't get a land. Got it. All right, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, don't have to start discarding until next turn, <laughs> so that's, that's the bright side. I guess I wouldn't I wouldn't start discarding. I would just play a artifact. Um, I mean, yeah, I I even my, all my practices. I don't think I've ever fizzled this hard actually. Um, I have screwed up by keeping a seven that looked a little bit similar to this, but worse, and it did fizzle. But I don't think I've ever fizzled. At six, like this, with a with a land and a threat, but I usually I, this is one of the, I I put in special possession a little late. Usually, you have at least a two drop threat. All right, pass this turn. I get well. This is not looking so good. I guess I get to see what his deck does. I mean, I'm not going to scoop it before he's actually managed to do anything. He's at four cards with nothing done. It's going to have a lot of mana here. Is it this turn that that goes off? It is. He gets to play it now. Oof. Ah, sorry guys, this one's not fun to watch, I don't think. But that is the problem with combo decks, and the problem with running 17 lands. Doubling season, so he's going to be able to get his ass foretold big pretty quickly. Got a second land. Well, the cranial plating I'll play down, just because I'm going to have to play that down eventually anyway, and it's not super important as a combo piece. Okay, I get Fragmentize. He probably has a counter spell, but I'm going to try it. Maybe he's realizing that he can use this free spell from As Foretold to counter it. Okay, he figured it out. That's fine. I figured he was going to counter it, but yeah, I mean, what are you going to do, right? Well, this deck seems like a pretty good matchup if you have an all reasonable draw. Unfortunately for us, our draw was not even slightly reasonable. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess for seven, I'll just wait. Well, turn six. Neither person's done anything. He's down to three cards. I mean, he probably has um, ancestral visions. He just must not be drawing them. Uh, come on, creature or land. I didn't go down creatures or anything. Nope. Uh, I have a lot of creatures. Just. I'm a quarter through my deck, and of the 18 or so, I've drawn... Well, this is not technically a creature, but... I would count it in my creature slot, basically. And of the 18, I've drawn one. So, I don't know if my 17 lanes, I've drawn two. 
So that's like half my deck. It's over half my deck. I've just drawn the other half. Okay, Eugene, that's fine. Minus 10, sure. Well, he did eventually get something. Unfortunately, Spectral Possession does not match up well against Eugene. Okay, well, I'm a cool do it. I'll, I'll scoop down the cool. You got it. All right, well, so this should be an easy matchup is what this tells me. Uh, and there's nothing to change. I just jam it back. Uh, it's going to be a really sad day if we lose to this deck. But if we draw like last game, it could definitely happen. So it's the way combo decks are. They're fragile. You know, if you don't draw well, you can get yourself a little stuck. Well, let's go first. Well, this looks a little bit more fair, but I think it's still a keep. We'll see how much removal he has and what he wants to remove. All right, Srams. Do I play Sram here? Well, first thing I do is attack. Maybe I do play Saram here. Gets me a free draw. Armament Master doesn't do anything till next turn anyway, although it, do, it will do less next turn if I don't play it now. I'll, I'll jam Saram. Just another land. That's not a good draw, but it's fine. Takes two damage plays, uh, explore to put down another card. Got it. Sure. We draw. Come on, combo piece. Oh, that's it's not bad. I think I will play it. No nope, more land. Wow. <sighs> Game one, we got like seven land. Game two, we got two land after turn ten or so. Game three, coming through with the, like, the seven land draw again. Um, I don't think it's worth equipping anything up here. I'm going to start by attacking for three. If he has a sweeper, I'm in a little trouble. But if he doesn't have a sweeper, I might just like win next turn. So I I'm going to be doing quite a bit of damage. But yeah, he might have a sweeper. I don't, I don't know. I he hasn't shown me any sweepers yet. But these become five fives. 1, 2, 10, I do 14 if you can't stop any of it. He brings it in on tap, so presumably he has something that costs... Oh, maybe he has a kill spell, a uh, fatal push, and then also... Oh, interesting, and he fatal pushes that one, which is super interesting too. Then as foretold... Yep, that's fine. Well, he certainly has better luck drawing his as foretold than I do with drawing the, sh the stuff I need, but... I guess that's the way it goes sometimes. He's a little low on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess if he has a land and an, a Eugen, he'll probably just win. Does that change anything? Well, I guess we'll find out. Another Armament Master. Don't think I play the Armament Master here. I think I just play this on cool Core Duelist to do 14. Okay. He breaks he breaks that to destroy an artifact. Alright, well that actually is kind of good news. Cause that means now he definitely can't Eugene, which is the only thing I know about that super scary that he has. Goes to eight. But again, I can do eight next turn if he doesn't uh have anything, because I can play down Armament Master, equip a spider silk net, and oh, but he has another Lotus Plume. Well, we'll see what he finds off his serum visions. Well, this has turned... Game 3 at least has been interesting. Even though I got a little a little bit more lane than I would have expected. <laughs> but it's the way... There's always going to be some amount of variance. The, the variance game 2 is a little ridiculous. Especially given it was two draws in a row. Variance game 3 is a little bit more... 1 and one in 3 were, were like very much off from, from kind of the middle of the bell curve. But not so much that they totally make the deck unplayable. Um, so, it's alright. He has two cards in hand, so not a lot to work with. 
He breaks it for black. Sure. Does he just have like damnation? Lost legacy. What is he lost legacying on? I mean, I can't stop it. Pure Steel Paladin. No, that's fine. Okay, I probably just... Well, unless he has a kill spell, I'd probably just win. If his last card is removal, I probably don't. But I can swing for exactly 8 if he doesn't have anything else. I mean, losing Pure Steel Paladin is a big deal, but it's really not the end of the world for this deck. That's partly why I built the deck the way I did. Um, like, if Cheerio has lost Pure Steel, it would lose the game. If this, if this loses Pure Steel, I mean, maybe he may have Counter Spell here is the only thing I can think. Nope. All right, equip, swing eight. Yeah, he gives up. We got it! Sweet, we beat as foretold. <laughs> Starting out with a win. Like I said, this deck can win, and it can win fair if your opponent is kind of shuts down your combo -y stuff a little bit. So uh, even with really pretty bad draws, we managed to pull this one out against the really neat as foretold deck. I really like as foretold. I wanted to make a deck in paper with it a little bit just because I think I own five copies of Ancestral Visions. I know I'm only allowed to put four in the deck, but still. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Hey guys, Bobgar here. I just really wanted to quickly say, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content in general and would like to see more of it, subscribe. I'll be coming out with more content in the future. And please leave me comments and let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, both in terms of production and in terms of my play and my deck building and all that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time.